The story begins on a rainy and stormy day while a violet-haired girl wonders how. Changed her life in an instant as her sister ends up dying in the most unexpected way. While she never wondered ever in her life that she would have to spend her whole life. Without her one day, it seems that she and her sister were only a year apart from each other but despite their age, both of them surprisingly were being raised differently from each other even though. They looked almost similar in every aspect, looks, tastes, and even their favorite food. Choices. It is revealed that ever since Ju Yoon and Hyogen were born, they were being raised in a tiny semi-basement as the place reeked of mold and mildew. Despite the condition of their house, both of the sisters considered their tiny place as their little heaven as the three of them lived together. But their father was absent from the beginning as he was never there for them and for some reason, the protagonist was never bothered by his absence. Instead, she was worried about her mother all the time since she had always been ill, which made her feel like she would be out of the picture someday. Ju Yun always had to face her classmates and reject their proposal of playing at their place knowing that they barely have space to live in. When they would ask about her room to play in, she would always have to face the truth as she doesn't even have her own room while all of her classmates were living a different life. In that way, Ju Yun realized for the first time in her life how poor her family really was as none of her classmates would be able to answer anything on her face. They moved on together while she kept standing in the middle of the street alone. The fact that her classmates bought new shoes while she kept wearing her worn-out shoes hand down to her revealed the differences between them. While every kid in her class had a father and separate pair of shoes for winter and summer and a house containing three rooms, she had none. She never realized these things before she met her classmates in elementary school to acknowledge others' life. When she used to ask her sister what she wanted to be in life, she used to say that she just wants to be richer when she is older with a big smile on her face. She used to fascinate Ji Yoon with her dreams of living in a house with lots of rooms and there would be a room for her, one for her sister and one for their mother felt like a dream. To Ji Yoon as she only wanted to get a pair of new shoes in yellow, Hyajin wanted to buy a warm new blanket and they then would continue to dream about having a new computer as they would plan where their computer would be inside the house. Ji Yoon would place the wardrobes together to feel like she is climbing into a two-story house while the wallpaper of their house stayed badly faded as water dripped down from the ceiling. The ants crawled across the floorboard, but the dreams carried both sisters as if they would be living in a good place someday in their imagination while having colorful shoes to wear every day. Both of them dreamed of having a large two-story house where they would be having their friends come over, having nothing less than a desk and computer, then a new warm blanket as well. Their mother will also be happy and healthy and wouldn't have to work all day anymore and everything would feel like some dream come true one day. Then one day when she was 22 years old, her dream was shattered forever. That day, when she opened the door to their house, she witnessed her mother lying down. On the floor as the ants continued to crawl all over the fallen food creating an obscene situation in front of her. Their mother lay unconsciously on the cold floor and ever since she woke up in the hospital, she could no longer speak, losing the strength to utter a single word with her mouth. The only way for her to communicate was by using a groaning sound made by her from the base of her throat with eyes containing void of all life. As their mother lost the strength to keep going on, the crushing debt that continued to hang over their heads began to illustrate their ill-fated life once again as it overflowed out. Of proportion, both of them dropped out of their college to start working any kind of job. They would find to try their best with all of their might to keep it all holding together. But life constantly made them realize that no matter what they do to keep it all together, there was no way to get out of their tragedy of life. An unfortunate life where they would have to keep their heads down knowing that poor people have to apologize when they are sick. The only thing that they could say is sorry for every question asked by the people in front of them. They were revealed to the fact that hope has a way of plummeting which even outruns time at a much faster pace than the time it takes to rise inside someone. She didn't want to live that way anymore. She was tired of wanting to rest, to live a normal life like the other people living her age worrying over grades and school. They would worry about allowance to hang out with friends living such a normal life, but she was constantly worried about someone noticing how worn and tattered her shoes are. 
The explanation, made by her wanting not to live like a worm anymore made her tear up, and her words feel like growing thorns out of roses to her mother who was in pain seeing her child in the worst position of her life. She trembled in fear looking at the pale face of her mother, she apologized seeing the current condition of her body as she is about to die anytime soon. She didn't want her mother to feel bad as she promised not to be like that ever again. As she talked about being better the next day, her mother didn't get to see the beginning of the next day as she didn't get the chance to do so as she passed away pretty soon. Ji Yoon never wanted to say those words to her mother knowing that her mother would still be with them if she kept those words to herself, no matter how difficult her life was. At the time, she regretted not pretending that everything was alright, but they had to pack up everything while keeping heavy regrets deep inside their heart. Then after their mother's funeral, someone knocked at their door as some people came, looking for them at that time for some reason. When the door opened, a man asks about their identity to confirm if they are the two sisters named Hyajin Lee and Ju Yun Lee. When they both confirm their identity, the man asks for a bit of their time claiming that he needs to disclose some information with them. As he came to tell them something and it is something about their mother, the man claims that their father is looking for them with a smirk on his face while the two of them continue to stare at him strangely. Ji Yoon claims that she knows about the death of their father which happened long ago and the man seems to know something about it and he thinks that changing the venue of their discussion might be better. All of them get comfortable in some local cafe and he shows the sister the picture of their mother and father. None of them had ever seen their father in their whole life and their whole life. Their father was like some surreal character out of a movie as if he was some sort of god unreachable to them. On the inside, they knew that their father exists but never expected to meet someone like him face to face for practical reasons which they had to accept in the end. They couldn't help but wonder why the man was talking about it after all this time as their mother passed some days ago. Ji Yoon couldn't comprehend the fact that their mother had to lose her life unconditionally and now their father is looking for them all of a sudden as if he is trying to show them his kindness for some mysterious reason. The man insists that there was an agreement between their mother and father so he could do nothing about it and their mother didn't want him to contact them until she died. That was the agreement between their parents' divorce and when none of them could understand what was going on, the man decides to explain the whole story to them. Another day as he has something even more important to talk about. He then explains that one of them is about to their father's family as a daughter to be registered with Dixiong group, but not the two of them altogether. Both of the girls have heard of the Dixiong group on the television and the father, whom they have never met wasn't a god but someone so rich that he was way out of their reach which makes them feel like he might have been some god at some point. In their perspective, Ji Yoon couldn't help but understand the fact why he would want to take responsibility after all this time and then something hit her mind as she remembers what the man clearly said while making the announcement. When the man brings up the topic of their financial suffering, Ji Yoon then questions the fact why only one of them is about to be taken care of while another one of them is about to be left alone. The man's face turns into some unworldly emotion, and he states that they will only be needing one of them which ends up creating an obscene moment. Between the both of them, it seems that the man was none other than their father's secretary, and the terms of the agreement were in essence which is money. In exchange for one of them becoming part of the Dixiong group, they will be settling their debt and providing compensation and pay for their living expenses. Ji Yoon could only feel helpless about the whole endeavor, not realizing that they wanted to do something like that to them from the beginning. It felt like Ji Yoon that they were offering to buy their lives with money and deep down she felt that it would have been better for them to reject their offers outright. But the secretary's words made her stop rejecting the offer even though she wanted to do so. Ji Yoon realizes what happens to poor people like her as they do not have any kind of right to choose how they will spend their life. Hyajin approaches Ji Yoon to express what was in her heart as she wanted to live with her father thinking that it will be a good idea. And Ji Yoon was shocked out of her own mind realizing what is about to happen. Ji Yoon yanks her hand from her shoulder, trying to remind her that she is about to be sold off for money as even their mother had to get a divorce to break away her connections from them in the first place. She tries her best to make Hyajin understand that there might be something malicious about them and their intentions but Hyajin is more afraid of being stuck in the small basement which created a boundary around her whole life which makes her feel like 
being sold off will be a better option for her. Ji Yoon had never seen her sister so helpless, as she is afraid of one of them falling sick one day and the fact their mother had to die because of how things are for them. The fact that she had to die because they didn't have any money to get better treatment made her feel like getting out of their small house was the only option in front of her. She didn't care if she was about to be sold off to the devil if she could get out of poverty and, at that time, Ji Yoon realized that she wasn't the only person who was suffering from poverty. In the end, Hyajin made the decision of her life to move without her sister Ji Yoon and their father's secretary come in to take her to her father. The man suggests Hyajin leave, her suitcase claiming that it is too old and she could have a new one back at home. Ji Yoon could sense that there was always something wrong about the man and his behavior, since even though he would always have a smile in the corner of his mouth, nothing really felt sincere about him as his whole attitude felt dry as if he came to claim something that he bought with money. Hyajin insists that she wants to take the diary with her as it was a gift from her sister Ji Yoon and the man decides to accept her request. But both of them were too tired to think things through properly or maybe they didn't want to think about anything at all, no matter if they were crawling into a trap or not. It only felt like an escape from their hopeless ditch of life that could be granted, and it was enough for both of them. Then Ji Yoon reminisces about the time that she spent with her sister in childhood, the fact that Hyajin wanted to be rich when she gets older sparks inside her mind made her feel like Hyajin's dream is about to be true. Hyajin had thought of becoming rich from the time when she was only 10 years old and slowly that day, the distance between them grew so much that even Ji Yoon's whisper would never reach her sister anymore even, though she didn't want her sister to leave from the deep inside of her heart. As soon as Hyajin left the house, Ji Yoon notices the balance in her account and she was astonished to see that kind of amount as she has never seen such a huge number in her whole life, but Ji Yoon insists on living inside the same shabby house which she used to live in with her sister and her mother who is now not with them anymore. Even though all of their debts had been settled by her father, Ji Yoon could never think of bringing herself to spend the compensation money, and the only thing she felt was a vast emptiness inside her heart as if she had already lost her sister. She only felt like she was paid for selling her sister. It was shocking how Hyajin had become the daughter of a Kibal family, but she was still a loving sister to Ji Yoon whom she could always depend on. Just like every other day, Hyajin came to visit her sister and she brought a lot of gifts for her sister, things they loved back then in their childhood. Hyajin used to bring things like a laptop, a warm blanket, and even a huge desk for her sister as the days passed. But Ji Yoon never wanted her to bring things like these while Hyajin felt bad coming to meet her sister empty-handed. When Ji Yoon asks her sister how her days are going, Hyajin blushes, remembering something as she wanted to disclose something to her. It seems that Hyajin is about to be engaged to someone named Santi, and the person named Santi Jai was the firstborn son of the family who owns Sa Inc. The marriage between the daughter of the Dixiong group and the son of Sa Inc. is the reason why their father wanted Hyajin and Ji Yoon couldn't wrap her head around rich people, knowing all they wanted was to play house even if they didn't want to be together with someone, just fulfilling the formalities. Ji Yoon didn't know if her sister truly wanted it to happen or if it was forcefully arranged, for her not knowing if she had come to accept it or if she actually liked the person with whom she is about to get married. When Ji Yoon asked Hyajin about it, she claimed that Sianti was very kind and admirable as a person, and he was the reason why she changed the look of her hair as she liked it more that way. But apart from everything else, Ji Yoon liked how Hyajin looked happy to her and it seems that Hyajin didn't forget how she wanted to have a new pair of yellow shoes. When Hyajin revealed the shoes to her sister, her happiness knew no bounds as her eyes started to beam in excitement and she liked it quite a lot. She ended up crying that day, knowing that Hyajin remembered what she used to like but that day, Ji Yoon never really needed any of the things they would dream of continuously. She knew that what she really wanted with all her heart was for Hyajin to be happy more than anyone else in the whole world. Hyajin's happiness was the only thing that really mattered to her, but the reason why she was unable to see the resemblance between the photograph of her mother next to the stranger who never even cared for them and her sister photographed next to the man named Santi Jai felt like nothing but a fever dream. Then soon the day came when Ji Yoon had to attend the funeral of her own sister and it felt like she was in a dream as her mind was in chaos as nothing felt real. People around 
her were wailing but yet, she noticed her sister smiling inside the picture frame as she glances right back at her father's face whom she had never met before in her whole life. He was surrounded by his people from the Dixiong group and the look that he had on. His face made her feel like she was indifferent about the matter of her sister's death. Also, the man whom her sister was married to, Seonti Jai, didn't even bother showing up to her funeral even though he was nothing but admirable and kind according to her opinion. The fact that her sister's death was ruled out as a suicide made her feel like it was something that was pre-planned by her own husband. Ji Yoon starts to react unconditionally, and she demands answers from her father asking if he had paid them to make her see this day. She only wanted answers from him and he didn't even bother to answer any of her questions as his secretary gets up from his seat to calm her down claiming that they understand her pain. He reveals that Ji Yoon's sister had been on antidepressants for quite some time and they tried their best to provide her with all the medical help that she needed with a fake smile on his face. After hearing out the man, Ji Yoon faces the man to ask him why they didn't stop her from traveling out alone in her terrifying state. The man insists that they were thinking that it was done for her treatment, and it seems that her sister attempted suicide during an impromptu trip to Canada and she had hung herself in the hotel room she booked. Soon her father stands up from his seat to give Ji Yoon something which belonged to her sister. He then hands the written will on behalf of his dead daughter to Ji Yoon and after hearing the words out of the old man's mouth, Ji Yoon's heart sinks almost instantly. Oh, this time, she was trying her best to deny the fact that her sister had died already and she still thinks that maybe it wasn't her sister's will after all dreaming and only to be some sort of prank. She realizes that there is truly something wrong with the people that she hated. So much thinking around the fact that they would go so far as this just for an arranged marriage. Ji Yoon thinks to herself that Hyogen would never do such a thing like taking her own life, knowing that she was never a person who would want to do something like that. Knowing that the amount of money the people in front of her have, it wouldn't be that hard for them to bring someone's death and while she opens the letter handed to her by her father, she wonders if it was truly written by her sister after all. She knows that she will be able to confirm her handwriting in an instant. She flips the page to reveal the words written inside and it was Hyogen begging her father not to take Ji Yoon as she wouldn't be able to withstand the same thing if it happened to her sister as well even after her death. Ji Yoon notices that it was truly written by her dead sister and her whole mind starts to go blank in an instant. While the whole world around her starts to rumble, they continue to talk about the rest of her sister's belongings claiming that all of her stuff will be disposed of soon enough. They wanted to know if Ji Yoon wanted to retrieve them and asked her to pay them a visit. On a certain day, they continue to talk about how the Dixiong group will be reclaiming all of the written assets from CO Inc. They didn't just stop there but they continue to explain that they are ready to offer Ji Yoon everything out of her sister's life insurance as a consolation while Ji Yoon reminisces about the last days with her sister when she was still living. Just as Ji Yoon is about to fall down and her whole body starts to shake, someone grabs onto her hand to calm her down so she doesn't fall down. The man beside him asks her father and his secretary to give it a rest knowing that it must be hard on Ji Yoon claiming that they could wait until after the funeral was over. While the man beside her continues to speak, Ji Yoon wonders who the person is that is, talking on behalf of her feeling like she had already seen the man somewhere before. The guy insists Ji Yoon leave all of Hyogen's belongings to him as he is taking the duty of delivering them to Ji Yoon himself which seems like a better option to him judging the condition of Ji Yoon. Then at that time, Ji Yoon realizes that she had already seen the person somewhere and he was in the back of the picture of Hyogen and Seonti Jai when they were taking the picture before their engagement. His name is Iho Jai as he is the younger brother of who used to be her sister's fiancé Seonti Jai. Ji Yoon claims that she would prefer that to happen. Single foot inside her father's house. Then soon a few days later, the guy comes over to her house with her sister's boxes, carrying all her belongings as the sky continues to pour down raining on the earth. As the guy continued to help her through her sister's belongings, she couldn't understand the reason behind him helping her and she thought that it might be his unexplainable kindness toward her. But even so, she couldn't stop herself to ask him the words that blurted out of her mouth, as she asks the man if there wasn't any way he could have helped her sister in the end. When she notices the silent demeanor of the man, she decides to apologize to him for asking such a heavy question suggesting he should pretend as if she didn't even ask him. 
anything, then the man apologizes on behalf of his brother knowing that it is possible that she will never forgive them as something so tragic happened to her sister because of their family. But Ji Yun claims that it is okay since she never wanted an apology from him, and the man asks her permission to ask her a question in return. When Ji Yun fails to guess what the man is talking about, he asks her if he truly doesn't know who he is which leaves her. In awe as she gets puzzled looking at his demeanor and seriousness, his voice starts to feel as if he had found someone whom he had been missing for a long time and Ji Yun decides to answer the man saying that he is none other than the younger brother of Mr. Sian Ti Jai. But it seems that it wasn't the answer the man was looking for. After all, the man sighs after saying never mind to her claiming that he shouldn't have asked the question in the first place and prepares to leave the house as rain continues to splatter on the roof continuously. As the man leaves the house, Ji Yun continues to wonder about him as if it felt to her that he truly knew of her beforehand. When he finally dissolves into the far distance, Ji Yun decides to open all of her sister's boxes that carried her belongings and she tried to grasp the clothing that her sister used to wear to feel whatever small traces her sister had left behind. She feels helpless, feeling the desperation of her sister asking herself why she didn't decide to tell her own sister about her own situation. Knowing that she could have been there for her and listened to her story of what she was going through, she takes a glance at the diary that her sister had left behind. As soon as she looks at her diary, she remembers the day when her sister had left her alone and she starts to believe that her sister might have written something on the diary for her to take a look at. The moment Ji Yun starts looking through the first pages of her sister's diary, she notices how she began writing the pages as a symbol of good luck as it was given as a gift to her. From her sister, Hyogen took notes of everything about how her new life began at her new house as the housekeepers did everything for her while her one single room was as big as the semi-basement apartment she used to live in. She hoped that she would get used to her new life soon enough and the fact that Hyogen always looked cheerful in every part of her life reflected through the way she adapted to her new life. She also wrote about the matter of how she met her fiancé for the first time and she truly liked him which makes Ji Yoon wonder what went wrong after all. Soon the demeanor of her writing on diary changes as she started to feel empty inside her new house, despite the fact that it was filled with people, it still felt like the house has no life in it. She used to write about the fact that everyone used to ignore her whenever she walked or passed by them. They would always pretend not to notice her as if she didn't exist anywhere near them. She used to feel like people didn't think of her as a human being in her new household. The words written in the diary reflected her pain and loneliness feeling every corner of her room. Then Ji Yoon's attention catches how her stepmother used to hate her as she always would say cruel words to her and started to feel like her father only brought her inside his own house to get ignored by everyone. She believed that her thought that she wasn't worth caring for and even knowing that she had to be strong, it was still hard on her. She continued to feel as if she is the only person who had a heart, and no matter how much she loved her husband, all he would do is smile back at her knowing that he doesn't like her. Back, she looked through everything to find out what she ever did to him to make him feel that way, in a way that he never was able to love her even for once. She then soon resigned from work while her father claimed that she wasn't capable enough to do so which made her feel like a useless trash deep inside her heart. She then would get terrified of waking up in the morning feeling lonely, knowing that nobody wanted her. Ji Yoon continued to feel the pain that her sister felt but she couldn't wonder why the whole family acted towards her sister like that as her eyes begin to tear up. Hyajin even wrote about how visiting Ji Yoon made her feel like she was alive again, feeling that she could breathe once again. She used to miss the days when they were all living together with their mother, how she used to snuggle up in the only room that they had while the ceiling continues to drip down water while making a slight sound. But, Hyogen felt like her sister Ji Yoon was happy and that was the only reason why she never wanted to run away from the hellhole that she called life which makes Ji Yoon tremble in. Shock, Ji Yoon starts to feel like it would have been better if she was the one who went in for her sister as the times continue to pass on the clock. If only she could have taken her place to leave, maybe her sister would still be living right now. She prays to God to take her back. In time so she could be the one to go instead, she is ready to take her life away for her. Sister hoping that Hyogen would still be alive in front of her. Suddenly the time on the clock halts and even the rain stops from making a sound outside. And sunny weather appears through her windows of the basement. 
Ji Yun realizes that the time has stopped as soon as she stands up from the floor realizing that God has finally taken pity on her after hearing her begging to him. When Ji Yun notices that everything has stopped in the world around her, she goes on to investigate what has happened and decides to reach her surroundings to confirm that she isn't really dreaming. As things don't make any sense to her, the clock instantly starts going back in time in an instant the moment she goes on to touch it. The clock then suddenly halts in the past back in time as she gasps while transforming into her past self and the clock starts ticking once again. As the clock halts after a while, Ji Yun finds herself sitting down on the floor, calming herself as the time is about to show her the magic she wanted from the essence of God. The birds start chirping again and she realizes that she had fallen asleep while she was looking through Hyogen's belongings. As she glances right beside her, she notices the diary that she had gifted her sister and as she grabs it, she doesn't see any kind of writing that was done by her sister back in the future. The diary only contains the page where she wrote the beginning of it where Hyogen claimed that the diary will bring good luck to her. As it was given to her by her only sister, Ji Yoon. Suddenly, the door creaks in front of Ji Yoon and she can't believe her ears what she is. Hearing in front of her, she couldn't believe that there will be another person except for her in their same old semi-basement. Soon Hyogen calls out to her seeing that she has woken up while she continues to carry the diary of her dead sister, but now that person is standing right in front of her. Hyogen comes in asking her to come out as they still have to fix more boxes that belonged. To their mother, the whole situation makes her tear up almost instantly, and she dashes almost instantly toward her sister as she wrapped around her arms tight around her so. Hyogen doesn't get to disappear again from her sight. Hyogen doesn't realize why Ji Yoon is acting this way which makes her question her activities as she thinks that she had a bad dream. Ji Yoon cries her eyes out insisting that she shouldn't be leaving her alone ever. Again while Hyogen claims that she will not be going anywhere as she promises to stay with her forever. Both of them decide to have a cup of tea together. Concerned Hyogen asks Ji Yoon if she is feeling better now and it seems that Ji Yoon has calmed down after having a chat with her sister for a long time. She finds out that it has only been a few days since their mother died and they have already attended her funeral. All of her belongings are lying around. The floor and Ji Yoon made Hyogen read her own diary and the pages that were filled with. Hyogen's pain for some reason have vanished revealing the empty condition of them. Ji Yoon couldn't help but wonder why nothing in front of her is making any sense but realized that God has granted her to have a second chance at life to make everything. Correct? That is when Ji Yoon realizes that she had truly gone back in time before they meet the strange man asking for one of them to come with him to have a luxurious life in their father's mansion. Ji Yoon realizes that it is almost time as the man will be soon approaching their house at the time when finally the bell rings. Hyogen wonders who came to visit them at the moment and knowing what truly happens in the future, Ji Yoon holds Hyogen's hand, claiming that she will be the one to open the door to protect her from what is about to come for them. Just as Ji Yoon predicted, the secretary of his father comes to their house with the same intention that he had previously, but Ji Yoon ends up rejecting the man as she thought that. She would which makes him wonder what has gotten into her which is making her behave like that. The man then takes them into the same cafe and utters the same words that he did previously while showing the same photo of their mother and father. She then finally grasps the fact that she had truly reached her past and after hearing everything in the desperation out of Ji Yoon's mouth, Hyogen asks for some time to think thinking that she will manage to make her sister understand so she will accept the proposition given to them. She insists that they are open to his ideas, but she will need some time to think as Ji Yoon's isn't reacting that well after hearing the man till the end. The man then presses them saying that they can take as much as time they need to think insisting that the offer will be helpful for them to get out of their crippling debt. When both of the sisters reach their home, Hyogen questions her sister Ji Yoon for reacting. Badly knowing that she isn't in her usual self as she used to be always. She even tries to make her understand that the offer may be unusual, but she didn't have to get that upset. After hearing the man, it seems that Hyogen tried her best to keep the conversation going. And Ji Yoon recognized the same look on her face that she had back in the past when the secretary told them about his part of the story. It makes Ji Yoon wonder what the better option for them will be, maybe refusing the whole idea and continuing to live as they used to do with their mother. 
but she knows that even though she has returned to the past, the whole thing is quite similar to the man and his father knowing that they still have the same intentions to play as they are struggling to make their amends while paying back the debt. The moment Hyogen is about to say that she will be the one to go, Ji Yoon finishes the sentence by saying that she will be the one to go instead of her. She insists that she wanted to live in a large house even though it wasn't in her heart at all. While continued to feel that she is trapped in some sort of maze, she presses on her sister about the matter, so she doesn't have to get into the death trap this time as well. She wanted to scream in frustration, but she couldn't, realizing that none of them have any hope to hold on to. She struggles to accept the fact that even after traveling back in time, this is the option she has, to choose to save their life out of the evil's grasp. Finally, Hyogen decides to accept her sister's request knowing that both of their lives are about to be separated from them. Instantly, Ji Yoon notices how her sister's hands are shaking while she was packing her bag to travel to her father's house but she couldn't say anything, so she kept pretending that she didn't notice. Insisting that the secretary is about to come soon, she claims that she will be outside, waiting for him so Hyogen doesn't have to see the man embarrassing them. Ji Yoon states that she will be calling her sister as soon as she reaches the house while apologizing to her inside her mind as they will be parting ways. She couldn't keep the request her sister had made back in their previous time. Just when Ji Yoon is about to leave the house, Hyogen ends up slamming on the door, requesting and begging her sister not to leave revealing that the truth may be harsher than they think knowing that they have only agreed to take one of them. She insists on sacrificing herself instead of her knowing that something bad will happen and she made the same decision in her previous life knowing that she wouldn't be happy at all. Ji Yun realizes that her sacrificed her life just because of her so she can be happy. Hyogen is only a year older than her, but she made such a hard decision to fulfill the task of protecting her little sister whom she loved so much. But this time, Ji Yun isn't about to let that happen as she promises that nothing wrong will happen so she thanks her sister insisting that she should be happy as she will be able to rest in this life for real. Ji Yoon then leaves for the hellhole knowing that the secretary will be waiting for her at the end of the road and it will be filled with thorns for her. Soon Ji Yoon gets into the car with the secretary and while she presses the diary in her hands she remembers how she faced off with Hyogen revealing her wish of taking the diary with her knowing that it will make her feel close to her. After a while, they soon reach the estate of her father which is about to be her new home. Even though anyone in her place would be amazed, Ji Yoon feels a heavy pain in her chest. The fact that this is the place where her sister felt so much pain. Remembering everything that Hyogen felt inside the estate, Ji Yoon holds the diary close to her. When she finally gets inside the luxuriously furnished estate, she sits in front of her father and his young wife who then discloses the information about her future education. They claim that they have already arranged a schedule for her and she has to learn as quickly as possible to work for the repayment of her and her sister's debt as it will be depending solely on her performance in college. Both her father and her stepmother felt like a picture hung up on a wall which she is hardly about to get used to as her father instructs her to do her best as if her life depends on it, knowing that she is different from her sister and she hadn't been prepared for. Harsh words coming out of her father's mouth she admits to everything that her father claims. Soon her father allows her to move upstairs as her lessons will be starting the next day. As soon as she gets into her room, she starts to feel like she is currently living in one of those messed up soap operas while looking at the reflection of her sister in the mirror in front of her. She remembers the things that her sister wrote in her diary and decides to check up on it not realizing that the diary will be filled in with the painful words written by her own sister. She soon realizes that she isn't the only one who traveled back in time, but also the diary which is now filled with the handwritten words that were written by her sister in the timeline which she had to come back. From then on, the only thing that Ji Yoon continuously did for several days is checking the numbers on her phone screen as soon as she awakes and no matter how many times she did, the time and date still stood back to three years ago but she thinks that it is better like this knowing that her sister is still alive back at home. She is relieved to know that whenever she goes back to her house, she will still be able to talk to her. In the morning, when Ji Yoon walks down the stairs, she meets a blonde woman who recognizes her identity as she introduces herself as her new sister. The woman starts reaching for her and welcomes her saying that she is pleased to meet her. 
Ji Yoon realizes that she is meeting her new stepsister and the woman introduces herself as Seong Ji Lee. According to her sister, she isn't the person she is trying to be knowing that she is the reflection of the couple that she met only yesterday. While Seong Ji tries to act like she is getting along with her, her behavior seems the most suspicious to Ji Yoon knowing that she is looking unusually graceful. That night, Ji Yoon continues to sit at her desk as she continues to watch over the names that she had seen in her sister's diary including her new stepsister and her soon-to-be husband, Seonti Jai. But, now she knows there is someone else and that person is Iho Jai. She carefully wonders how someone like Iho Jai knew who she was as she couldn't grasp the situation perfectly. Knowing that she has to observe everything from now on, she continues to watch over the fulfilled pages of her sister's diary as it is the only thing that accompanies her. She reads how her sister wrote about the stepmother's birthday and talked about her favorite flowers which makes her realize that she will have to wake up soon to visit the local flower shop the next day. She thinks of fulfilling the target of her next day. She feels like she is accompanied by her sister as long as she has the diary with her and decides to put up a brave smile on her face. The next day, Ji Yoon works according to her schedule that she had planned, and after buying a bouquet of flowers for her stepmother's birthday, she plans back to head home. As soon as she enters the house, she faces the wrath of her stepmother who is bothered by the fact that she went outside on her own accord to roam around. When she notices her stepmother wearing the nightgown around the house, she realizes that she is living in a different world than her and she holds the bouquet of flowers for her which cools down. The stepmother for a while who then instructs her to leave them anywhere at the house. Then her stepmother and her daughter engage in a conversation about someone special coming to visit her and even though it is her life's matter they are talking about, she cannot wrap her head around the whole subject and join in with them which makes her realize why Hyogen might have written those things in her diary. Soon the bell rings and Seonji goes on to open the door as it is none other than Iho Jai whom she was looking forward to meeting all this time after reaching the house. Iho goes on to greet Ji Yoon's stepmother knowing that it is her birthday but before he finishes his sentence, he ends up glancing at Ji Yoon and it leaves him speechless as his eyes get bigger. Now Iho has the same look on his face, the look when someone ends up finding something they were looking forward to seeing for a very long time. Before Iho is about to say something, Seonji interrupts asking her what he brought for her as she notices him, holding a box in his hand. When Seonji notices that Iho is looking at Ji Yoon, astonishingly, Seonji insists that she should head back to her room for a while to which Ji Yoon decides to agree without asking a question. When Ji Yoon returns to her room, she thinks that if someone like Iho knows her already, she might become her ally but she couldn't wrap her head around the fact that she ended up meeting someone like him as he is nothing but the younger son of Saw Group. When she opens the curtains of her room, she notices Iho saying goodbye to Seonji claiming that he will come next time to spend time with her and he ends up staring at Ji Yoon as soon as he notices her from the windows. The stare down between the both of them makes Ji Yoon feel embarrassed so she ends up shutting the curtain while not understanding what is wrong with him as he always has the same look on his face whenever she glances at him. Every morning, Ji Yoon rereads her sister's diary, and it is the only peaceful time inside the mansion that she would be able to feel as if Hyogen is right in front of her. But the rest of the day she gets to spend in solidarity as it is always boring and uneventful. Just as it is described in her sister's diary, she finds the flowers that she brought for her. Stepmom inside the kitchen garbage can as if she hated flowers. It makes Ji Yoon think about Hyogen for hours every day since this same incident happened to her sister as well. Then soon one day, her schedule inside the mansion starts getting busier as the teacher starts coming to teach her a foreign language and she is quite proud to see that Ji Yoon is a fast learner. She followed through with what her father had advised her while knowing that lessons in humanities or foreign languages might come in handy for her in the future. And the fact that she is receiving them for free is quite exquisite to her. Then it comes to the time of learning table manners, knowing that raising objections will only raise problems for her. She keeps on digesting all her studies and she never wanted to shame her mother or her sister even once. But it is still suffocating for her as she has to be evaluated by her stepmother as if she is some sort of circus performer to her. 
while the teacher praises her for doing great, it is never enough for her stepmother who only claims that could always do better. The woman stooped even lower by bringing up the fact that she used to be poor while calling her a lowly beggar. Just the moment Ji Yoon is about to protest her mother's behavior, Xianji calls out her mother saying that she shouldn't be that hard on her claiming that it isn't like her at all. Ji Yoon notices that there are some moments her stepmother looks like a normal person when she is looking at her daughter and sharing moments with her, but whenever it comes to Ji Yoon, she is quite different. After saying goodbye to the teacher, Seonji reveals that someone special is coming to meet Ji Yoon at night and she should get her hair done for the day, and that person is none other than her fiancé, Seonti Jai, the same person who had been her sister's fiancé and didn't even bother to show up to her funeral. When Seonji wants her to take the credit card, Ji Yoon refuses claiming that it will not be necessary but refusing her only creates more of a problematic situation where Seonji ends up revealing her true color to her. For the first time, Ji Yoon realizes why Hyogen was so terrified of Seonji Lee, but she is ready to face her unlike Hyogen. The moment Ji Yoon gets her hair done, she starts to feel like her reflection doesn't look like her at all as if she couldn't recognize herself anymore. The black dress she wears looks so elegant which makes her wonder what she truly wants from her as there is no benefit for her to take the trouble on behalf of her and it is one of the many things that she still doesn't understand. When she returns back home, Seonji praises her look saying that she finally looks presentable and instructs her to hurry up as the guests are about to arrive soon enough. Ji Yoon couldn't understand the fact why Seonji would have to dress up to meet her fiancé. And to her, unlike her, she looked beautiful in the white dress that she wore which would truly put her at the center of everyone's attention. The difference between her and Ji Yoon makes her feel like Seonji would be the largest and most beautiful sculpture on display if the whole mansion was an art gallery. But after all this time, Ji Yoon realizes that Seonji picked up the black dress for her so she could drain her of color to hide her from sight as if she is a small black and white next to a grand sculpture. The whole endeavor feels stupid to Ji Yoon knowing that she didn't want to stand out in the first place. When the guests finally arrive, Seonji greets Seonti and Aiho. At that time, Aiho and Seonti both look at Ji Yoon as the food gets served soon enough. All this time, Ji Yoon is curious to see what in Seonti Jai impressed her sister so much and the handsome look on his face and the friendly smile that he wears takes her to the next step. She realizes that Hyogen had fallen for the friendly face while everyone looks at her with discontent and arrogance. As the lunch moves forward, Seonti asks Seonji about Ji Yoon and she introduces Ji Yoon as her sister while explaining that she couldn't be with the family for her own personal reasons. It seems that Seonti only knows that she had been sick which is nothing but a fabricated lie to place a facade in front of his eyes. He asks her about how she had been adjusting inside the mansion so she decides to answer the question the modest way she could, even though Seonti Jai looks like a kind person with his polite words and thoughtful gestures. Ji Yoon couldn't believe what she is seeing in front of her fixing her mind on the luck Hyogen had to face previously. As time passes, Seonji tries to move away with Aiho, pressing on the matter of getting Ji Yoon and Seonti alone in the living room. But Aiho doesn't accept her proposal and as they have finished eating, he thinks that leaving will be the better option for them. Seonji asks him to stay longer but he utters the same sentence to avoid the confrontation once again. Seonti starts looking at Seonji hoping that she wouldn't be offended by his brother's act while Seonji tries her best to try to get Aiho to look at her even for once. But the whole time, Aiho was looking straight at Ji Yoon as the air is filled with uneasiness. Soon Aiho and Seonti both leave the mansion in their car and as soon as they move into the distance, Seonji starts interrogating her about the connection between Aiho and Ji Yoon, assuming that he might know about her from beforehand. Ji Yoon decides to speak to her honestly as she herself doesn't know why Aiho seems like someone who knows her at the same place. At that moment, Seonji reveals that there is something she wants her to know which is that Seonti Jai is the name of her fiancé so. She doesn't want Ji Yoon to let her attention wander to someone else. When Seonji claims that she wants her to follow her orders, Ji Yoon decides to be direct with her asking if she wants her to marry Seonti or not. When Ji Yoon reveals her true feelings to Seonji and at that moment, Seonji reveals the true fact behind her reactions. Everything that she is doing right now is the reason that she doesn't have to be the one to be married to Seonti. 
back at his own house, Io seems devastated as he was waiting for the moment when he would meet Ji Yoon once again. But nothing matters to him as in the end, he couldn't speak a single word to her. It seems that Iho is desperate to do something knowing that it cannot keep going on like that for some reason. He will have to talk to Ji Yoon alone. The next morning, Ji Yoon's stepmother brings up the topic of Ji Yoon joining the company the next Monday which starts to feel all too soon for her. Her stepmother claims that she had been wasting time lounging around the mansion while she had been busting her butt working all night studying for her future. While back in the day, she had to fight for the most useless jobs of all time. She gets handed over everyone's dream job without doing anything at all which makes her wonder for a while. Soon Sionji comes in to disclose the fact that Santi will be appointed as the team leader of Dixiong Group while she will be working at his family's company as if they are about to act as exchange students. It makes Ji Yoon think that the children of the T-Ball families are working at each other's companies to boost their resumes and Sionji is eager to prepare a dress for Ji Yoon as she is about to join the company the next day. But knowing the egoistic truth about Sionji's character, she refuses to take her offer. Despite the fact that Seonji can do a complete 180 of her behavior whenever she is refused by someone, the moment she is refused by Ji Yoon, she starts acting rashly and she ends up grabbing her by the collar as if she is threatening her to do as she is told. It seems that she is eager to make her dress the way Seonji likes for the fact that she knows a lot about him. Seonji elaborates that her only mission is to steal the heart of Seonji no matter what happens as she would want her sister to live in peace. The moment she hears the painful words striking in the back of her head, Ji Yoon's mind goes blank for not being able to comprehend how Seonji would be able to threaten her with the means of her sister's life. But all this time, her stepmother is sipping coffee as if nothing ordinary had happened in front of her. Ji Yoon learns the fact that there is no Difference between speaking out or not as she is the only one who would get hurt in the scenario. Ji Yoon couldn't wrap her head around the fact if she borrowed the money to save a life. Would it actually matter in the end if she couldn't afford it? She feels like she would ask the question to her sister, but she starts to feel quite empty inside her as there is no one by her side. When she thought that she is prepared for everything, the reality is something else and she decides to give her sister's diary a read to spend the night. After reading through her sister's struggle and knowing the fact that she wanted to be strong for her, she decides to do the same. The next day, Ji Yoon prepares to face the truth and she heads inside the Dixiong group, building to reach the floor where the planning team was supposed to be. While she waited for the new team leader, Io bumps into her for some reason. Before she is about to speak, a woman comes in front of them asking about the new team leader and it seems that the team leader is none other than Iho Jai who makes his presence represented in front of the woman. Ji Yoon is quite shocked to meet Iho Jai as nobody talked about it to her beforehand but she decides to be acquainted with the woman by introducing herself as the newest employee of the company while she continues to wonder if everything is going alright. But she is relieved because she feels more comfortable around Iho and when she is deep inside her thoughts, the employee beside her desk starts to act friendly. When Ji Yoon tries to do anything as work, the woman advises her to visit the team leader. After lunch as it is in their custom to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the team leader once, they are newly appointed. She remarks the fact that she tried to exempt Ji Yoon from the list, but Iho Jai insisted that she should do the same which makes her wonder about the reason behind his actions. Ji Yoon's meeting with Iho starts in the late afternoon when he wraps up his meeting with everyone else and at that time, the raindrops begin to splatter against the windows, making Ji Yoon feel that the weather wouldn't get better anytime soon as there was a thick curtain of rain and strong winds. As soon as she enters the room of Iho, he greets her to have a seat and since they know each other already, he insists on skipping the introductions. Since Ji Yoon doesn't know much about the company, she questions him if he wants anything to ask her but after. Hearing this, Iho stays silent for a while. Then Iho ends up asking her if she has any plans for the night and when he gets to know that nobody is coming to pick her up, he insists on driving her back home. The whole time, Ji Yoon continues to think that the rain will let up even for a bit as that. Way. She would be able to make some excuses to get out of the situation no matter if she got wet, but the weather ends up getting way worse which leaves her with no choice but to leave with Iho Jai in the end. 
Soon Iho Jai brings the car in front of the company and asks her to get inside, and the kind behavior made by Iho reaches the point where it almost starts to feel strange to her. This is the whole reason why she has a hard time trusting him despite the fact how comfortable she is around him. She has already seen how someone could smile at her one day and act cruel the next day and knowing that Iho Jai is a member of the Jai family, she has a hard time trusting someone like him. Soon they reach the mansion and before she is about to get out of the car, Iho Jai hands her his umbrella knowing that she will get wet, which makes her question his uncanny kind behavior. As she couldn't wrap her head around his act, Ji Yoon refuses to take the umbrella from him since they aren't that close and she questions his kindness knowing that there must be some reason behind it. Even when he refuses to take the umbrella back, she decides to get out of the car to reject his kindness but the situation changes even further the moment. She notices that he went outside to protect her from the rain while getting wet himself. The whole confrontation between them starts to feel quite familiar to her, even the environment around them makes her reminisce about the time when the boyish face of Tiha Jai reflects in front of her eyes as if he is standing in his school uniform. The memories that she had once forgotten started to flood her mind like the pouring rain from the sky. The scene then shifts back to her past when Ji Yoon is still studying in school, too excited to leave the love letter for her school crush Jihan Kang. The kindness and gentleness of Jihan Kang were so different from Hyajin's and soon Ji Yoon fell in love with him, without even knowing. All she overthinks about leaving the letter in his locker thinking that nobody will be in the school that early, someone starts to step in her direction which embarrasses her quite greatly and that person was none other than Iho Jai himself. As soon as he moves in front of her, he asks her directly about what she has in her hand and the reason why she confronts her about the letter is because someone had been leaving notes with swear words on them in his locker. As soon as he finishes speaking, the chill starts to come down through Ji Yoon's spine as there were several rumors about him at school, but she wasn't sure of all of them. People used to speak about him, how he punched another boy in his year on the first day of his school while someone talked about how he brought goons to come to see the principal when he called his parents and many more. Knowing how deep the situation could get, Ji Yoon ended up confessing that it was a love letter but one thing that Iho Jai misunderstood is that he thought that she brought the love letter for him. But when Iho Jai questions her about the fact, she couldn't even say no to his face knowing his background and even when she tried her best to make him understand the situation, he ended up rejecting her even before hearing her finish the sentence. While he could move away from her by saying something polite, he said no to her on her face acting blunt and that was the answer Ji Yoon had to digest after confessing love to someone for the first time in her life. She couldn't comprehend the fact that she was dumped by someone whom she didn't even like in the first place. Also, she couldn't keep wrapping her head around to place the letter inside the locker, so she decided to wait until class time was over. As soon as the class time finished, it started raining cats and dogs, but she didn't have an umbrella with her. She was happy enough that she would be able to confess her love to the person she truly likes no matter what. While waiting for Jihun, she hoped that he will be happy after getting the letter and Maybe they might be sharing the same umbrella in the end which kept her hopeful, fantasizing that they will walk to the bus stop together. While blushing in the hopes for her first love, she hopes that he will be reaching her soon in excitement. Soon, Jihun starts to come down the stairs with an umbrella in his hand talking about how he knew that it was about to rain. Ji Yoon instantly got nervous as soon as her eyes met. But as soon as she moved back toward Jihun, she ended up handing the letter to Iho Jai. Once again, mistakenly. At that moment, Iho Jai brings up the fact that he already said no to her in the morning, thinking that she wanted to hand it over to him. But when she was about to correct her mistake by recalling the truth, she noticed that the boy she loved was looking at someone else lovingly, the same way she would look hoping that he would get her letter. Soon Jihun makes an excuse and leaves alone thinking that Iho will need some time alone. With Ji Yoon and decides to leave with Minji, the person whom Jihun used to like as she was waiting for him in the rain. As soon as she sees the boy likes leaving with someone else, Iho Jai remarks how he would ignore her the next time she is about to hand him the letter again. But before he could even finish his sentence, he notices the tear-down face of Ji Yoon and notices the name written behind her letter and got to know about his mistake. He gasps, after realizing that he has already made a mistake and decided to confront the truth with Ji Yoon. 
before he was about to console Ji Yoon about the situation, she had already crumbled the letter in her hands and started to dash through the rain while sobbing. After a while, Iho Jai came up to her with his own umbrella to protect her from the rain as he realized the mistake that he made in the beginning. At that moment, Iho Jai apologized to Ji Yoon and wanted her to take the umbrella for making false assumptions and as soon as she took the umbrella from his hand, he instantly left and never gave her the chance to give it back to him. The only thing that she could see is him turning his back as he walked through the rain and that was the last time she had ever witnessed Iho Jai in the school. The same altercation between them flashes the same memory in her mind while she continues to wonder how his name suddenly changed into Iho Jai from Tia Jai. But the most mesmerizing thing out of everything, she is quite giddy about the fact that she never got to know how his father was the chairman of a conglomerate. The moment Iho Jai looks back at her, she runs straight inside the mansion while he keeps standing in the rain. Looking back at her, that night, Ji Yoon spends the whole night looking at the ceiling of the mansion while thinking about Iho Jai as the cold look on his face stared right at her and she remembered how warm his palm felt when he touched her to leave the umbrella while his eyes were empty as it had been missing someone. Ji Yoon continues to wonder how her sister felt after finding out that Iho Jai was appointed instead of Sianti but she is quite shocked to see that it didn't really happen to her sister at all as if something had deviated from how it was written in Hyogen's diary. The difference between their timelines has been revealed as their places had been reversed which makes her think that there might be some reason why Iho Jai was appointed as the team leader. Ji Yoon starts to feel greatly relieved knowing that there is still someone good left among everyone that wants to despise and use her despite his weird behavior around her as he wanted to be there for her. That night, Ji Yoon has a dream about an old, faded memory while it was raining outside and she was standing in front of a boy holding a love letter in her hands and even though she couldn't see the face of that boy, she clearly remembers that the boy had taken her letter and smiled back at her. In the morning when Ji Yoon wakes up, the rain has already stopped and at that time, Sianji had been confronting her father about how everything went wrong as their plan of placing Ji Yoon and Sianti together has flipped on them since Sianti was appointed in her department while Iho Jai ended up in Ji Yoon's team. Sianji's condition has worsened, as she is seen looking right at the picture of her father confronting him while gnawing her nails as the situation didn't go how it was intended. The time starts to go well for Ji Yoon at work as there is a ton of things that Ji Yoon has to learn while organizing a mountain full of files are there to organize. The woman that is, beside Ji Yoon starts fantasizing about Iho Jai claiming how he is while Ji Yoon admits that. There are reasons why people would like Iho Jai based on his characteristics and especially his almond-shaped eyes. After hearing hi at him, Ji Yoon feels like she would have been feeling the same if it hadn't been for her prior experience with him. That day when she is about to leave for home thinking that she will have to check up on the diary and her sister, she bumps into Seanti Jai as she wasn't paying attention at all. As soon as she notices Seanti standing in front of her, she starts to get nervous and he claims that he is for Iho thinking of catching dinner with him. But for some reason, Seanti questions Ji Yoon if she has any plans for the night and brushes her hair as if he is the kindest man in the whole world. But Ji Yoon claims that she wouldn't want to interrupt his dinner with his brother, but the man starts to act persistent even when Iho shows up behind them. Instead of thinking about anything, Iho Jai demands his brother to give Ji Yoon some space, claiming that there are many eyes at work which makes him bring up the matter of him. Getting engaged to Ji Yoon, Ji Yoon couldn't help but wonder what is going on as the atmosphere around them starts to get really uncomfortable, and in the end, she ends up accepting his offer saying that she will have dinner with them both. Soon they arrive at some fancy restaurant, but Ji Yoon continues to fidget around while glancing and groaning at the same time revealing her nervousness. She was having a hard time thinking about how it actually happened and Seanti Jai breaks the ice by asking how. She feels about working at the company. He even brings up the topic of how Iho is treating her at work which she decides to answer neutrally while Sianti thinks that the situation is too bad wondering how he was supposed to work in the Dsiong company. But in the end, it turned out differently. Sianti Jai then starts to blabber about how the three of them could work together which changes the sight of Iho who isn't really enjoying the conversation. Iho decides to be direct about the situation and answers negatively claiming that he doesn't have any intentions of working with him while he doesn't reject the idea of enjoying working with 
Ji Yun. Then Siante Jai decides to create a cloudy situation by asking Ji Yun whom she would want to work with more and when she has a difficult time answering the question, Siante starts to get abnormally close to her requesting her to pick him. And that wraps up another thrilling recap, but the adventure doesn't end here. Subscribe to our channel if you want more twists, turns, and heart-pounding stories. Stay tuned for our next recap.